Hey there guys! We are live here on this wonderful Wednesday afternoon and we have brought with us a new guest. This is Spencer. Um, he has joined our team in our production shop um, here just a few months ago. Mm -hmm. You haven't been here that long, but turns out he's really talented at things other than just clicking. Yep. So, so Spencer here has started, he's been making, how long have you been making whips, Spencer? Uh, on and off for about four years. For about four years. So this guy is kind of a braiding machine. Mm -hmm. He's he's brought in some, um, we've taken him out to the alley and, and seen that he actually knows how to use these guys as well. Um, but he has offered to kind of start a small series of just braiding how-to videos. And we are hoping to work our way up to a whip video. That is not where we're going to start today, guys, because mm -hmm. that is pretty in depth oh, yeah. um but we're going to start with just a simple carrying bone braid yep. is that what we're going to call yep. it yeah so we've got this tony i don't know if you want to go to the overhead yeah so we've just got we're just did this little wristlet guy mm -hmm. um it's basically just bolo like if you you know we we sell some bolo here that you can buy by the yard but if you didn't like the colors that we had or you just wanted to make your own um that's basically what we're going to show you how to do today is that four strands yep yeah, four strands. So we're okay. gonna do six. We're gonna do six strands. Oh boy, so you, you've lost me there. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Well, this is what we're doing today. So hopefully you guys are ready and rocking and rolling for this. Mm -hmm. Denny and I are both here to learn. This is gonna be kind of a new fun thing for us. So let's get to it, Spencer. Yep. All right. Well, the first thing to do is figure out how long you want it. So what, what is the rule of thumb? How much lace do you need uh, I normally for, for length? Double it. Double it. Uh, some people go one and a half times. So you can, I was double it to be safe. Because I've been short. That's yeah, no I'm, good. I'm like an eight <laughs> foot width before and I'm like six inches short. <laughs> Take it all off and cut new strands and that's a pain. I'm not you, much you don't of a braider, but it, I have been there. You, yeah. just, you don't just call it at seven and a half feet. You're like, this is good enough. No, because the way it's built. Okay. We'll <laughs> Yeah, you can't call it short. You can call it long, you can't call it short. That's depressing. So. So yeah. let's be safe. Yeah. So we brought with us some kangaroos, uh, kangaroo lace today. So he's got like most of um, the couple of the whips on the table here are made with paracord. Um, we've got some thin paracord and then some heavier stuff like this is the size that we sell. And then this one was made with deer lace. But just kind of to start the braiding off, mm -hmm. we're going to use our handy dandy trusty kangaroo. So we've yep. got some eighth inch kangaroo lace here today. Yep. Oh, let me see if I can find the end of this now. Oh, oh, there, there it was. Is. Right. There it is. So I just grabbed some of our miscellaneous stuff from the retail. The right end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So say we want to make one this long. So we'll go about like there. And we'll double that over. Well, that's just not very much length at all. No, it doesn't take very much. And then so that'd be about yeah. So that's the size loop we want to make about that big. And so we're going to take it and double it that. So that's how much you need okay. for one strand. Right. But we're going to do a six plat as it's called. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need two of those. So we're going to take it, half it in half. Take your scissors. Got that. Okay. And then we got. So we have two of our six two strands. Two of our six strands. Okay. Yes. So we'll <laughs> that over there, <laughs> that wad. <laughs> that wad. Yeah, that wad of <laughs> But those rawhide braiders, they, they make what they call a taco, which they. they yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and tie it. That's probably what this was. Probably, but it's not anymore. <laughs> it was a taco, now it's a wad. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Man, Chris, he used to, because he used to work on the, the bead side of our showroom floor, and to measure out either paracord or like the lace or like the round lace that we sell by the yard, he was so good at doing that taco. Like he could just be talking to you and just go like this, and yeah. he'd just be winding up like 15 yards of whatever <laughs> lace. It was impressive. Yep. Well, then to make it easy, we're just going to... But I would say when you're when you're using, like, long lengths of, of lace, you have to wind it up some way symmetrical so you don't tie yes. a knot every time Very you much. something. Yeah. yeah. I, like, I like the old around-the-elbow move, <laughs> and then, you know, you wrap it up so you've got, like, a handle at the top. 
<laughs> and this one. Yep. So what do we have? I think I think this is our red. Honestly, I don't know if that's the exact color that it's called, but this is the glazed version that we're using here. And then this is just our regular old turquoise color. And then we've got... It's also glazed though, right? I No, no, it is oh, not, it's glazed. not glazed. No. This is just standard finish. And then this is the saddle tan. Yep. That one is a standard finish. Six strands of three colors. Yep. Too many color for one. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see what we're doing to all these yeah. colors. That's the, that's the goal here. So. Thank you. Out of the way, not a problem. So now we got all these. We're going to find the middle of all three of them. Right here. So we're going to fold that in half. Make sure the outside is on the outside. Like the hair side. It's basically out. The grain side. Grain side. I always call it the hair side. <laughs> I don't know how much hair. That's right, though. I yeah, guess yeah. Kangaroos do have a decent amount of fur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. We have a we have a hairy kangaroo on our retail showroom. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so you've just pinched them in the middle. Yep, pinched them in the middle. Now we're gonna clamp them in our vise here. I do like the rubber jaws one because it won't mar up your leather. Mm -hmm. yeah, especially if you're doing something like this, you don't want to pinch what you've already braided and then smush it and put imprints into it. Sure. So that just makes a not very good finish. All right, so now we're going to get one of each strand on each side. Like that. You're gonna make sure each strand is in the same place on each side. So you got the saddle and then the turquoise and then the red. So you've got three of each color on on each side. Yep. And then you're going from outside to inside. Uh, or is that that would be a flat braid? So like this one over here. Okay. But with your color schemes, are you do you have the red on the outside on both sides? Yep. Red on the outside and then turquoise. And, and then the okay. Okay. Yep. And so it's more of like a mirror of each other. Yes. Yep, exactly. Okay. Yep, and then we're going to start it by crossing the middle two over each other. And that'll start our braid. And then you see how this top one is crossing over? It's this one right here? Yeah. So we want to take um, this one over here. Okay. So the, one, the side that went over, we're going to take one from that side. Bring it around the back. And in a six plat. Uh, we're going to go under two strands and then over one strand. So we're going to bring that over like so. I don't know if this is going to help. Is it kind of hard to see? Yeah, it's pretty tiny. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Let me move some cameras around. Let me get out of your way here. No, you find that way you're at, Denny. Good. Guys at home, do we like the white background or a black background? I feel like the white is a little better. I think the white's better. Yeah, I think it's better that way. Yeah. All right, let me try to switch to that oh, okay. for a second. And let me zoom that camera in above you. Right. That way everybody's not moving around. <laughs> we don't make We're it. all like trying to squint and see you over here. I'm dizzy. Let's not get too close. All right. Let's see what we got there. Wait for it to stop wiggling around everywhere. Yep. Small spaces. We got this huge room in here, but it's still like squishing everything. <laughs> yeah. in here. All right. There we go. Okay, guys, here we go. Yeah, yeah now I, even I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've crossed the middle two. Yep, all right, I'll undo it here. I guess we'll start over. Yep. Okay. So we've gotten across the middle two over each other, and then we've taken the back one, the red one, and we're gonna, the one off, like, the one that crosses over the way that's pointing, we're gonna take one from that side, bring it under two, 
So we went under two strands, then we go over one. And this varies from how many strands you have. Okay. So like a four plat, you only have two strands on each side, so you'd go under one, over one. Okay. What if you had eight? An eight, you would go under two, over two. Okay. Yep, and so on and so forth. So yeah, and then whoop, the red one goes next. So the same thing with this side. We're gonna bring it under two, and then over two, make sure it's facing the right way. Over one. Over one, yeah. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> All right. And do we just keep repeating that to take the very far right and left one? Yep, the one. And then swing it over and yep. around. Just like this. And I see that you're just constantly kind of pushing up. Yeah, yeah. On you that break. You don't want to like pull it super tight at this point. Okay. Because you'll mess up what we have in here. You'll like pull it out. I mean, you don't want to clamp it super tight. So. Just snug, just to hold them in place. And how much did you leave in that clamp? Maybe like a quarter uh, qu of an inch? Quarter over? inch, okay. yeah. I mean, you could put more. Okay. We're, that all, that's all going to be cut off when we're done. Okay, so, so that doesn't... Yes. Whatever you feel like clamping, as long as you don't take up too much of your room. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And not too little, because then we won't have anything to clamp onto. Exactly. Yep. It's got to be just right. Mm -hmm. So the pattern's the same over and over. You're always pulling from... Yep. If we were talking about it, it would be on the camera side of it. It's your right yep. under two. It would be under two, so under these two, and then over this one. And over one. Because this one's crossing over yeah. this one yep. right here. So you're always going under your two outside ones and then over your middle one. Yep. So once you figure out how it started, then you just do the same thing over and over and get good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Keep the same tension with each strand. That's a hard to do. Yeah. But well, yeah. It's starting to it's starting to come out. We're starting to see. Yeah. I think another thing people have to realize is they have to keep make the lace wrap around itself and and not twist it twist, on, the, on yes. the way around. It yeah. it reminds me of tying a tie. Yes. Like mm -hmm. coming up and around, and then yep. you always want to make sure the top of the tie. Oops! See, I did the wrong one there. We distracted him. Yeah. So I pulled. I pulled this one over here, which is a pattern. You can do a two pattern where you have, you pull two strands from the same side. So it would give you something more like that. So instead of all instead terminating? Of, yeah, you can do um, like uh, this right here. Uh huh. This is eight strands so instead of going one one on each side go eight one side eight the other side huh okay and that's how you get something like this and this would be a two diamond plat which instead of going uh under one oh uh, sorry under two over one you go under one over one under one that's a that's a lot, Spencer. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna yes. stick with the one this the, the one one, one yes. whatever under two over one yeah under, under two, two over one. one. Yeah. <laughs> I know I was looking at confused. at this handle too. So like this one is kind of fun where he's got two that come over and then two that go under yeah, two uh, that come over and you make like a box stitch almost. Yeah, it's I believe it's called a uh, swallow's eye. Ah. I do believe. Yeah, there's a little wax in those creases. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that, that one's pretty fun. Yep. So apparently there's a lot of variation. So yes. once you get the basics down, then you can mess with it. But we're just going to do the basics today, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Spencer, where did you learn how to braid? Uh, YouTube. Nice. YouTube, yep. There's so well, you're just, research. you're just joining the crowd here. Yep. yep. <laughs> YouTube is a wonderful tool. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Chuck asked, what braid is this? This is a herringbone. Herringbone. A round braid? Is it a round braid? Uh, or is it a... No? I wouldn't necessarily call it a round. I've always called it a herringbone. But okay. yeah, it is round. Yes. Okay. Yes.
if you did it all the same color, it would still be a herringbone? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and not just around, right? <laughs> So it kind of keeps the uh, colors all in a line. Yeah. So basically what you're doing is you're just uh, wrapping the strand around. So you're <laughs> just making a spiral. Just yeah. putting strands in between them. So I don't know if that made much sense. Putting st strands between the spiral? Yeah. You're basically taking one strand and spiraling it down. Yes. Yeah, I see that. Okay. So yeah, if you follow one strand, you can... See, it, the strain comes all, all the way, way around, and then you can see it come out here, around. Yep. So. And it's really important, so every time he moves the string, he's always keeping the finish side um, uh, facing out yes. side of the braid. So yep. he flips it around the finish side, flips around to the back, and then it pulls up to the front. So just like mm -hmm. I said with like the tie, you always want to keep the finish side facing out. Yep. Especially with smaller strands, it's really easy to flip them. Yeah. I've done that. <laughs> There we go. We're just gonna keep going. This is what I feel like when I macrame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, listen to Larry. Larry just said that Larry Schmidt, who sent us the uh, slickers, just said the same thing. Reminds me of macrame. Yep. I don't know if any of you ever used to watch Taxi. The Reverend Jim told him one time, he said, said I spent a year of my life one time macrame a couch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It's a lot of macrame. Mm -hmm. This is so when we finish this little braid, it looks like we're gonna macrame an end on here with a little spiral knot. Yeah, uh, it's called a grapevine. A grapevine. Grapevine knot. Yep. And oh, that's, you know, yeah. that's exactly what's on the end of that star. All right, right that's there. nice. You got yeah. so many knots coming your way, guys. So here's the little end on the one that this little sample that he did. Yep. What do you wax these with? Uh, paraffin. Paraffin. Wax. Yep. Uh, get a. Big old tub and melt it all down. And have you ever it? used beeswax? I have not. No. I wonder if you would get a different effect with beeswax. I'm not sure. Isn't it beeswax a... is paraffin? Uh, gets uh, almost brittle when it's when it's cold. Yep. And uh, beeswax is more pliable. I think. Mm -hmm. I wonder. You ought to try that sometime. Yeah. Just see what happens. Yeah. Hmm. I just get quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. We could fund an experiment for you. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so that's, guys, that's what everything in in our industry is about is experimentation because you never know what's going to happen until you try it. Yeah, for sure. Well, and something on this side that would be I guess maybe would you want to see what a whip reacted yeah. to being completely yeah. mm -hmm. beeswaxed? Well, actually, uh in making a leather whip use uh, leather conditioner. I use a homemade leather conditioner. It's a mixture of beeswax, paraffin wax, and mink oil. Of course you do. Yes. <laughs> and you, it makes the strands slide better in between each other. It's so like on a, a whip, you want to pull the strands nice and tight. Mm -hmm. and so you, you do that something in there. As you, or actually before you break. You, you do, do it afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, you actually do it before and as you do it. I see. So you just keep adding to it. Yep. I mean, actually, after you cut the strands out, you stretch them, and that uh, prevents from when you're braiding, you pulling tight, and then there'll be a big skinny spot. I see. So you pre-stretch it. You pre-stretch it, and that prevents gaps. Gotcha. And things. So, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of one thing when people talk about they want to use deer lace for things. I'm just like, oh, man, it's going to stretch out on you like crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you pre-stretch it, then it's, just, it's fine. Yep. Yeah, this thing is pretty cool, guys. We had a lot of fun in the alley on Monday getting some videos mm -hmm. of him cracking the whips. The dog did not like it so much. Luna was not a fan. <laughs> she uh, she ran away yeah. back to the office and hid in the corner. <laughs> she, was, she was not having any of the, the yeah. whip action. She says, I am not a herding. She is a herding dog, so I don't know what her deal is, but she wasn't, she wasn't having it. Yeah, it took my dog quite a while to get used to it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with this. Yeah. Just having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I won't do anything. Anyway, so guys, yeah, speaking of Larry, thanks for joining us in here, Larry. We're super excited to have you. He sent us some more burnishers. 
and I believe that there are some left from people at the store here nabbing some because they were really excited about them and also wanted to buy some. So I know our e-commerce team right now is working on um, getting up some listings for these. I hope to have it up today. I'll put it. Okay, so we're hoping that camera over there. Okay, to have it up today, and um, so we'll we'll list each of these. I bet Rusty has a really cool thing he could bring in and show. But yeah, look at these guys. They're super, super awesome. Those are nice. Yeah, they are. Why do you mention Rusty? Because Rusty's in here, guys. Interrupting cow. Isn't it? Like that? <laughs> well, hey, it's a good day, though. Spencer, here's your paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> made it all worthwhile. Well, that's easy. <laughs> yep. Can you find it? Oh, all? Wednesday. <laughs> Stacy? Abigail? How's this video going? Good. So we're just you're doing great. We're just playing throughout the building. That's a good thing. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's been talking about it. Like, is this going to be safe where I can go back and watch it and replay it and go step by step? Yeah. Everyone wants be. to learn to braid. Mm -hmm. Braiding is cool. You can add. There's like like accessories to everything. You can Man, put like I'm a. So glad we have somebody else. That can I know. <laughs> the rest I used to, to have be to do this. Yeah. <laughs> the only braider in the building, and now we've. Got this guy. Look at this thing, Rusty. I know. I see. Like I said, you guys are playing throughout the building. So <laughs> I've been hearing Liz everywhere I go. Aww. I'm following you. <laughs> Keep up the good work. I don't get paid today. Hey, yeah. uh, you already got paid. Okay. Your husband thanks. has it. Then hey. yours is on your desk. Thank you. <laughs> we don't get paid. Paycheck bears. <laughs> He's our illustrious potentate. I'll tell you what, Denny, we should have brought in some saddle soap and we could have saddled soap some of the braids that he did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yep, I didn't do any of that. I'm sure we have saddle soap somewhere in the store. We never have any saddle soap anywhere. Denny uses it all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a can that I've had for probably six or seven months. It's just now getting down to almost empty. My probably when we get farther into um, our, our videos here, we'll do some pre-stretching. The kangaroo lace doesn't stretch too much. Uh, Mike just had a question about he should show some pre-stretch techniques. Um, but once once we actually start, I think pr probably working with actual the, the whip side of things. So in the next few videos here, when we actually get started with that, we'll show those yeah. kind of things. Mm -hmm. But for now, we're just we're just doing some braiding. Yeah. And this this is not stretched. No. Nope. Is there any difference between making a nylon whip and a leather whip? Uh, strands, like the length. Length and the and the, the leather strands have to be stretched, stretched and cut in a taper. Correct. Yeah. It it depends on how complex the whip you want to do. Yes. Yes. So, this one. Actually, I hardly tapered the strands. I was going to say, this looks pretty even all the way down. Yeah. So, this ends in a four-point fall hitch, which means there's four strands so, on the end knot. So, to make the whip itself taper, what do you do? Drop some strands? Drop strands as you go, yes. Yep, and that involves flipping it over and braiding the other side. So, so you start <laughs> with what, like... 16 or 18 or 20 strands, and, and when you get down towards the end, you're at... Four, four or six four. strands. Yep, four. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into so whip making. You really, in, in reality, you don't have to taper the strings at all. No. Paracord, you can't taper. So You don't say. Yeah. It's a little hard. I mean, if you get to try. <laughs> get it really would, hot. Yeah. <laughs> you start pulling the strands apart of the paracord. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, well, see, I didn't realize that. I thought the strands were all tapered. I thought, how in the world do you do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people do. They, uh, there's this one guy, I can't remember his name, but he has, I believe his uh, whips you can buy, his show whips have 84 strands. Uh -huh. Ooh. And they're all, they're like half this size. And he ends in a 12 point fall hitch. So he wow. drops all those strands as he goes down wow it's yeah. how do you even manage 84 strands i don't know i can't i don't know that's that sounds terrible <laughs> yeah he can like braid horses and things 
and is like he braids horses together. No, like in like into the handles and. Oh. Pictures. Yeah. Pictures. Wow. 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 Yeah. It's like maybe someday, but a long time from now. <laughs> that that amazes me. It really does. Uh, I can I can plat four around, and that's as much as I can do. That's as much as my feeble little mind will let me do. <laughs> and I'm seeing you braiding six, and I it it sounds so simple. Yeah. And you make it so simple. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but some of us are simpler yet. <laughs> <laughs> When when I got to go to Sheridan here a couple years back, one of the entries into their um, World Leather Showcase show was a knife and a knife sheath. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the, I mean, the knife wasn't all that exciting, but the handle was all braided with horse rawhide. Super yeah. fine strands of horse rawhide. It had... Um, like Turk's head knots on the top and the bottom mm -hmm. of the handle, and then the the handle was braided really fine, and then the the sheath was all um, kind of panels of horse rawhide with braid, like you know braided mm -hmm. stuff. It was probably it was the coolest thing I've seen, and I've looked since then to find some horse hide that's rawhide, but I don't know where you would get that. So, but it, the lace was so fine; it probably was about half that. Yeah. Well, which was pretty well, incredible. How about horse hair hitching? They, that used to be a big deal. The the prisons, they would, you know, back in the early 1900s and late 1800s in the prisons, those guys would, would braid horse hair. Mm -hmm. They called it hitching. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the same as braiding or not, but that stuff is phenomenally priced nowadays if you can find that, that old stuff. And I know there's a few people that do it now, but... Uh, have you ever tried that? I have not, no. Well, we should I get you some horse hair. We can just braid everything, guys. We're just yep. going to bring them all Try sorts of stuff. Things, yeah. Let's see here. Brad Burn asks, is the kangaroo um, is kangaroo really good for whip making? Yeah, it's like the best material you can use. Yeah. Yeah, it stretches the least. It's the strongest. Like, if you get a piece of cow lace this wide and you pull on it, it'll, it'll snap very easily. Yeah. So, yes, this and then... Deer, I assume, is the next. They're wild animals, so they're going to have the strongest. Tough skin. But deer is real skin. stretchy, isn't it? Yeah, and that's one of the you things gotta you got to deal with. So, mm -hmm. But still, I feel like it's going to stretch a lot before it breaks. Yeah. Like deers, you're going to have a hard time mm -hmm. breaking that. Yeah, like I made a six-foot snake whip, just like that one, at a cowhide. And I broke eight strands braiding that and I broke one braiding that wow so it also depends on the quality of your hide too sure uh, let's see here Mike uh, he was asked to braid a hat band for a felt cowboy hat what kind of braid would you suggest uh probably a flat braid I'm gonna say like this guy yeah something be beautiful yeah something braid. like this yeah Mm -hmm. And you could even make a belt with that. Yeah, you can. I've seen a lot of kind of vintage belts that are, are made like this. Mm -hmm. How many strands is that one? That is eight strands. Eight strands? Yep, it's just wide. It's wider strands. So if you use eight inch lace and eight strands, you would get that. So you would just add strands to mm -hmm. get more width? Yep. And yeah, there's... So gets, say somebody joins in the middle of our video here and... What we're doing, we're going. We we can explain it one more time, just if they've joined in. Well, yeah, under two, under two, over one. Yep, under two, over one. So, so always pulling from the right. Nope, nope. Yeah, pulling from alternating. alternating. Okay, alternating sides. So this strand crosses over like that, uh -huh. going to this side. So we would pull from this strand right here, going around the back. Under two, over one. Bringing that over, keeping it snug. And then see how this strand's crossing over like mm -hmm. this? We'd pull from this side now. Under two. Under two. Over one. Over one. Yes. We are doing a herringbone six flat. Yeah, and if you're if you're looking at it from from the top, what your your next one is the one that's the highest. Yes. Yeah. Yep. The highest that's strand. That's the one that's the one you're using next. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start from the top, whether it's <laughs> left or right. 
<laughs> yep. The whole bottom of your braiding it backwards. <laughs> no. Braiding away from you instead Don't of towards you. Don't do that, guy. <laughs> <laughs> make, make braiding even harder than it has yeah. to be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, if, you do, if you this right here, that is a pseudo English eye. All. So, pseudo meaning fake English eye. So, a real English eye, you would start from the skinny end and braid backwards. Ooh. Adding strings. Guys, so. I think we could go for the rest of the year doing braiding videos. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot. <laughs> Let's see here. Larry wants to know, on a whip, do you braid around a core material at the beginning? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, so. depending how thick you want it. I'm working on one now where it does not have a cord. It's only going to be a three-foot snake whip. I was going to say that one looks like it's got a dowel rod in it. Yes. Well, that is, and that's the handle. So this has oh sure uh, ball chain in it, like for ceiling lights. Oh. Give it a little extra weight. Okay. And then there's different lengths of paracord attached to that to give it a tapered foundation. And then you do a belly over that, which is that over it. And then you do another layer over that. Well, if you it's don't braid around the core, how do you how do you get your thickness? Just more strands. Yeah, you, that creates your diameter. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do a thicker whip, you, you start with the core. Mm -hmm. But if you if you did like how many did you say that guy used sixty four strands? He probably didn't need a core, did he? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Now, let's see. So seems familiar. Ask, do you want it? Excuse me. Do you want it to be stretchy, not stretchy, or just a little stretchy? The strands. Um, I'm assuming. If you pre-stretch them, uh, I guess it really doesn't matter. But it is as long as you're not pulling like super tight, like really cranking down on it, it shouldn't really matter. It probably depends on your consistency, right? Yes. How consistent you are with with how you pull it. Yep. Yep. Let's see here. If you break a strand, can you splice it back in? Uh, or are you screwed and you have to start over? Uh, if you're making something you want really nice, uh, you probably want to start over, but there is a way to splice it back in. Okay. Yes. So, like that one, I had to splice that strand back in. Okay. wonder if I can see where it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This is a lot. It is a lot. I see, I see like some sections where the, the skin is... Yeah, and that's uh, poor quality hide. Right. And that would be a ding or a scar in the leather that... Uh, like a break stretch. in the skin. Yes, yeah. and yeah. That, that's another thing that stretching it does. It Where the strand is going to break, it'll break whenever you stretch it. So hopefully you, you avoid prevent some of that. breaking it as you're braiding. Yes. Well, there you go. That's That's a good... It's a good thing. Let's see here. If someone wanted to try their hand at braiding before investing in kangaroo lace and suggestions on tool supplies, paracord? Paracord, yeah. Paracord is cheap, guys. I mean, it's like 10, 15 cents a yard or something like that. Like, mm -hmm. you really can't get much cheaper than just starting out with some good old fake material. Yeah. <laughs> and it'll last a long time. Yeah. You don't have to condition it or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. And you can get different widths. Like, uh, there's 275, which is what this one's made out of right here. It's about half the width of your typical 550 paracord. So what we sell here is the 550, um, but, I mean, you'd search paracord on Amazon or Etsy or wherever. You could probably... Mm -hmm. They sell multiple sizes. Yeah, they buy. You yeah. could even braid regular, just nylon cord, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. It, you could braid it. pretty much anything. Yeah. Yeah. I know we sell the Eslon thread, and that's, um, we sell it to a lot of you guys when you want, like, small batches of fun colors to do hand sewing with, or you can run it through, you know, your heavy stitcher if you wanted to. Um, but what it's actually meant for is kumihimo braiding, um, which is braiding around a disc that you pull all the cords into mm -hmm. the middle. I think you have, like, I think it's 16. You've got four, eight. I think it's 16 cords. That, that sounds right. Or maybe 12, somewhere in there. But, like, you, you wrap that little Eslon thread around this disc and you mm -hmm. make a round braid that you can like add beads onto and stuff. But that's why we originally carry that. Well, from my own experience, which is slight, <laughs> uh, 
I would think that the largest, the larger the lace or the cord that you use, the easier it would be to handle as a beginner. Am I correct uh, there? Yeah, probably. I mean, it depends on what knot you're doing. Like a, yeah. well, I mean, for doing so, what you're like, doing like right this, there. Yes, yes. Probably doing something super tiny would be difficult. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. another thing is the, if you want wider strands, uh, you need a core also because... So like if we were going to use the quarter inch, mm -hmm. we would need to like put a core down. This is a 40, roughly 45 degrees. Okay. And if you have thinner strands, it'll bring that up to cover it to like a 30 degree. And if you have wide strands, it'll be like this braided. Okay. So, so you lose a lot of body. Yeah. and it, Yeah. It's like the Chinese finger things. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. We can literally talk about anything in these videos. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, find the strands getting tangled? Uh, on this shorter strands, no. But if you're doing, like, on my that ten foot paracord one over there, those strands are twenty feet long when you start. The longest four, and yes, they get very tangled if you don't constantly untangle them. But that's what, when we first started the video, that what we were talking about, the the tacos or the wads. I was going to say, know. do you ever, like, take each of your strands and kind of, like, cinch them up so that they're shorter when you start? Or do you uh, find that that normally is not, convenient? because whenever I pull it through, this ha strand's normally hanging down, and I pull it up like that. Gotcha. You kind of get it out of the way. And bring it over. Okay. So... Even on, on a long strand, you do? Yeah, and that and that also prevents it from getting tangled. Instead of like bringing it over like this and leaving your yeah. tag end hanging down like that, bring the entire strand over it. That's why braiding uh, takes such a long time. And that'll, that'll lay that strand on top of all the other strands and prevent it from tangling. You'd probably also be working kind of more on the floor yes. at a height yep. and pulling through. Yep. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, this is looking pretty good. Yeah. I wish we would have grabbed a fun bead to put at the end, but that's fine. <laughs> well, after you get done braiding a project like that, do you uh, use what they call a rain rounder, or do you roll them on a table or something yep. to make them smooth out? Uh -huh. That's block of wood for right there. <laughs> That's the important block. That's the important right? block. Mark block. Yes. I was going to say, Denny does have one of his rounder, like this little metal. Yeah. Yeah. One of those things that looks like a rain rounder is cut somebody's called. head off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little guillotine for pulling your strands yeah. through without without the knife. Guillotine without the knife. Mm -hmm. Just hold you it. Yep. And I normally size my strands, which is what that thing over there is for. That sketchy thing. Uh, I don't know if we want to show that or not. Probably. Yeah, Spencer brought in this this homemade tool today that is um, a dowel rod shoved into a PVC pipe, and then he set um, a blade in it. Yes. And then it's got a, I don't know what's happening down here, but I'm sure yeah. it does it's something. It. It's how you tighten it. how you tighten the blade. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, don't use this at home, folks. Whatever you can, but just be careful because <laughs> yeah. it just has an experience. Yes. So we'll, we'll talk about this later. This is for beveling. Mm -hmm. Beveling and sizing, and, and that, sizing. that's what I was getting to. If yeah. you look at these two strands here, uh huh. Or okay. These two strands, you see this red one is quite a bit thinner than that. Uh, oh, did I saddle grab a one. Different? No, they're the same. It's just inconsistencies mm. in, in the strands, and that prevents that and makes just just a nicer braid. So you would pull each of your strands through this to make sure they're all even. Yep. I have no idea how this thing works. I'm very fascinated to try to use it. Yeah. But we're not going to do that today, guys, because that's 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 for another day. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Somebody said it looks, it makes uh, watching tooling leather look like a speedy process. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever bevel your lace? Yep. I do bevel it. I wanted to start with this project today, Denny, but this one needs to be beveled, so we're going to do this next week. So this is this 
the same idea, right? Yeah. But just a beveled lace so yeah, that it yeah. lays. And that, that's eight strands. That's eight strands. That's eight strands. You can see how much it's all, it's thinner than this. Yeah. What pattern is the wristlet there? It's or the, the bracelet. It's the same. It's a herringbone, but it's, it's just with eight strands. Oh, okay. So even it can still be the herringbone pattern, but as you up the strands and it changes the pattern a little bit. Or you well, get the pattern. You get rid, when you bevel it, you get rid of some uh, actual material. Mm -hmm. So the strands, they aren't thinner or they're still just as wide, mm -hmm. but they but they lay down. They kind of double they lay, over each they lay other. They a lot nicer. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to pick some colors for me next week so mm -hmm. that I can have a fun bracelet. Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. And then you just choose. I'm, I'm assuming on this one you had four brown strands and four tan strands, and then you braided them so yeah. that all of your mm -hmm. tan and brown came yeah. out together. And there's different ways. Like there's a million ways. Putting your colors <laughs> in different spots when you start gives you different patterns. As, yeah, that one, this one. This is a deep rabbit hole, guys. This is there a book or anything deep. that would show you? Is there books out there that have different pattern types to start? Uh, I believe there is. Yes, we. I know you. We have, have one. one that's called. It's a book by Bruce Grant. It's called Leather Braiding, I mm -hmm. believe, by Bruce Bruce Grant. And he shows all that stuff, but you have to be smart enough to follow what he shows. <laughs> He's laying out 24 strands and like doing it with pictures and arrows, and I'm like, I am confused, just it's making my head spin. I think it's a black and white book too, is it? Yes. So yeah. that yeah. That makes it a little harder. Yeah. Color is really nice when it comes to braiding. Yeah, to different strands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of numbering all black and white strands of one, two, three, four, fives, <laughs> if they were a different color, it might mm -hmm. be easier to follow. That's why YouTube is is getting it done these days because people can can show that easier than printed in a book. But yep. yeah, so there is a book if you wanted to, and that at least give you some of the basics for you to sit down and mull over for a while, look at. Mm -hmm. We're kind of getting to an end here. Yep. See how long this is here. So we've gotten a good bit, and then this is going to come around like this, and we're going to cut off each end. Okay. And splice together, and then bind this together. Ooh. And the loop will go in here. So, so maybe a couple more inches. Yeah. Just just to be safe. Better better too long than too short. Yeah, you can't put it back. Nope. As with everything leather, can't put it back. Nope. Can't get rid of the holes. Leather is unforgiving, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially when you cut it. <laughs> Have we mesmerized everybody, Tony? They are. They're talking about. They're talking about leather tooling right now. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about using the little lace maker. Oh yeah. To yeah. make lace mm -hmm. and talking about if you could use oil tan as long as it's not super stretchy. Mm -hmm. I guess even if it was stretchy and you were using it for the whole project, but you were just cons consistent with your stretch. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to the paracord, do you take out the core before you... Yes, it makes it lay a lot flatter. Okay. So, like with lace, would you want to use a leather that's very thick? Uh, this would probably be the thickest I would use. Okay, so not really. No. And, and oil, I mean, you have to... If it was thicker, you could bevel it and help it, right? Yeah, or... Uh, you can run it through a uh, skyver. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, split it down. Yeah. Split it down to the same consistency. So no. one more time before you get to the end of it, will you go over exactly what we're doing one yeah, more time? Yeah. And there was some other that said, oh, just join. What are we doing? <laughs> so herringbone pattern, yep. six strand, yep. plat, six plat. Six plat, yep. And we're basically taking the highest strand. <laughs> Denny. <laughs> and bringing it down around the back and bringing it under two. And then over one. Always just, keeping face oh, side out. Yep. Just like that. Making sure it's nice yep. and snug. Yep. Not. <clears throat> you don't need to keep it tight, but snug for this. And so taking the highest strand, right on the back, under two, over one. Just like that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Jessica says this is oddly relaxing, so maybe we'll just sit here and this be quiet. Oddly satisfying video. We'll just be quiet and watch you do this last little part. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to be quiet, guys. No, yeah. <laughs> Does not work. <laughs>
That's not why you brought me on here. No pressure, Spencer. <laughs> You never won the quiet game as a kid, did you, Lance? I never played the quiet game. No kidding. That's the problem. <laughs> the teacher said, hey, everyone but Liz, come over here. We're going to play the quiet game. <laughs> she tried so hard. Uh, I made it like a, maybe like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Except this could be an ASMR video. We have to get the microphone a little bit closer to what you have yeah. going on. Okay, so somebody corrected me on my paracord pricing here. So let me... Uh, what thickness of this lace? Did we say that? What, eighth thick? inch. This is eighth inch. It's eighth inch. Okay. Yep. Let me, let me get the correct just so that... I know, I know. Abigail will go back in, and she'll she'll actually put some links to the to the paracord. But um, let me. So. Um, somebody asked, "How could you explain again how changing the number of plats changes the pattern?" Oh uh, yes. Yeah. So say. I have six strands here. I wanted to go to eight strands. That would add one strand on each side. And then you, you basically want to split those four strands. So you would go around the back again, and then there would be another strand here. So you go under three? You would go under two over two. Oh, okay. Yeah. And typically that's what you would do is have uh, even strands on either side. It just makes for a little nicer. I don't know if it'll show it on the back, but if you look on the back, that is a bit uh, longer. Like the split right here, where the two strands cross. Mm -hmm. This this side, you see how much smaller triangles oh. it is from this side. Wow. Yeah. That's because we have six strands. If you had eight strands, that would it wouldn't happen. So. So even is better. Even is better. Yeah. So four strands that wouldn't happen either. No, nope. correct. Nope, four okay. strands, it would be... The same on the top and the bottom. Yep. Mm. So, yeah. So do you, do you find that it's it's more even every multiple of four that you do? So like if we went to 16 instead of 10? If we went to 12. You said even 12. amounts on both 12. sides. Even amounts on both sides. Okay. So on 12, we would have six over here and six over here. We would go under three, over three. So are you going under the same amount as you're going over? Right. It makes it even on both sides. I gotcha. Yes. So I was, I was corrected in my paracord pricing because I was real, real off. Apparently it's like a dollar a yard instead of 10 cents. So my, my bad guys, don't, don't, people, don't say Liz said. People were trying to buy paracord. <laughs> Liz is going to be paying 90 cents. Yeah, I'm going to have to make up the difference on that. So <laughs> just kidding. It's still way cheaper than leather. I think we're getting there. Yep. So we're just about there. Some great, great mentions of different braiding books that are on YouTube. So if you're on Facebook or you're on, I think we're on Instagram at the moment as well. So if you go to YouTube and look at the live comments, people put a lot of good books in there to see in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Yep. All right. So we've gotten about where we want. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a pair of hemostats and just clip that there so it doesn't go nowhere. And then we're going to take, so this is bonded nylon. I mean, you could use any thin thread, not too thin or else it'll break. But So that's just like a sewing machine? Yeah, it's, kind it's of what you all use in your sewing machines. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to make a loop in the string like so. I don't know. Oh, see that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to take it. Get a little more. So did you just cross it over itself, or did yeah. you actually tie it? Nope. I just made a little a little loop. Okay. Okay. So a little loop with the tag end sticking out. Yep. With the tag end sticking out. We're gonna lay that. Oop. Maybe. 
lay that on top of there. But maybe a little bit of like a waxed thread would be nice so it would stick together. Yeah, as long as it isn't too thick because you don't want it bulking up and then you'll have a big gotcha. lump there. Gotcha. Then we're going to loosely wrap it around a couple times so you don't pull the loop out or anything. Once we got a couple wraps, we're going to give it a good tug. It's like a hangman's knot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was used for tying fletchings on arrows and things mm -hmm. like that. So. Just a few wraps like that. And then we're going to take this, the working end, put it through the loop. And we're going to take our tag end here. And that loop is going to pull our working end through the rest of the binding we did. Okay. So now we can take that off. Clean up our tag ends. And now since this is nice and secured, we can just... Oh, lop, that's terrifying. Lop that off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hopefully you got that loop on there real good. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you got it on there good. I mean, you could put a little super glue on there if mm. you wanted. Just okay. on the tip. Yep. Don't get it on the uh, braiding. Sure. Because, you know, that will make it not look as nice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. The hard, crunchy, super glue look. Not yeah. the best. Unless you want it. <laughs> Unless you want it to look like that. I'm assuming we're going to do the same thing again. Yep. Just on the other side. Um, Mike, I, I feel like you probably could put a concho if, if, the, if it was hefty enough to hold it, but you just want to scooch the... Like, yeah. you wouldn't want to cut through the braid. No, that would... Because yeah. that would, then everything would just unravel. Mm -hmm. So if you could somehow wiggle to get the post of the concho into your flat braid, then it would probably be fine. Um, I suppose you could almost kind of, as you're braiding, you could kind of wiggle it around and you just open up yeah. that spot and allow for it. Yep. So, sure. Somebody's asking if we were going to give anything away this week. I don't know if we have anything. We'll give oh. this, this thread away that he's going to pop off. <laughs> I don't know if we have anything. To, what did we make last well, week? We had the bracelets. There's the cups. Yeah, what oh, are the cups? Oh, we do have the cups. We were going to give away those yeah. stone cups, guys. Yeah. What did I do? I don't know. They were on the table earlier. Well, you guys remember what we did last week, don't you? We did. We did the red band with the white and gray stone, and then we had... Yeah, some of my bits. <laughs> and then we're just going to cut off that other end, are we? Yep. Your head is really nice. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so now... I don't know if I'm going to give this one away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, what's next? Uh, we're going to roll it. And that smoothens everything out, gets rid of lumps and bumps in it, evens out the tension a bit. Do you stretch it also? Uh, you can stretch it, yes. I mean, that might make it lay a little bit. Yeah, that's what I always figured. If you stretch it, it kind of seats everything down mm -hmm. a little bit. You're just giving a good old tug. Yeah. I mean, this kangaroo should hold. Yeah. <laughs> if it breaks, I'd be worried. Well, and if you use a, a rounder like we were talking about, that stretches it itself. You know, mm -hmm. when you pull it through that rounder, you put a lot yeah, that, of stretch. Yeah, that just immediately makes it look uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. like it's Smooth, a lot different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a block of wood. Or you can put uh, some, like, rubber on this to make just it add a little friction a little friction to make it a little bit easier you'd probably do it on this table yeah. Yeah. Just keep that there we go there we go we're just gonna roll it no. adjust the camera here all right i had, a, I had everything nice and you tight can roll before. it with the roller maybe not that would yeah. be no i don't think so just kidding there you go. All right. <laughs> We're going to roll it. I feel 
like we're making dough right now. Mm -hmm. And that just rounds everything out, right? Rounds it, evens out the tension. Now, if you look, you can see the difference in between this part is rolled and this oh, part. A little bit. And I, and I bet I if, you if you feel it, see that. feel the difference even more yeah. than you can see it. Right here. Uh huh. This is rolled, this is not rolled. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So it flattens everything out nice and flat. A squirrely little worm. Mm -hmm. So like a 10 foot whip, you get knots on the end and... Yeah. <laughs> what kind of a workbench do you have to build these? Uh, I just do it on my table, the dining room table. Just on your table? Roll it on the floor. Okay. So. You don't have any dogs, do you? I do. Oh, you do? Yep. You just roll the hair all up in it? Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't shit. <laughs> That's my bane at home. Is anytime I do anything, there's just going to be dog hair in it. If I'm if I'm hand sewing and I've got the strings coming down, there's going to be dog hair in my stitch somewhere. Like it's guaranteed. Say so that strength, <laughs> strength and texture. <laughs> uh... Look at that. Yep. Now we got all that. Man, that looks nice. uh like just yeah. ten times different. Yeah. So nice. Now it's back over here. Just like that. Going to get our clip. Uh, let's see here. So this you can give me the bag. Yeah. So we're just using our like a five eight swivel snap. Um, the number on this one is a four dash zero one five three zero two if you care to look up this specific one, but any swivel snap will work. Um, you don't have to have a so specific. Can I have your package? <laughs> look, uh, Abigail's gonna put it in the, the description. description. Yep. All right, then we're just gonna flip that in there, like so. Nice. Gonna bend that over. And bend this over and then we're going to use more of that thread to bind so you're just butting them together butting them together okay. and then binding them to the other half okay and you could glue this also so. yeah i think some some bead fix sounds like it'd be a good idea right now i love that bead fix you don't want to get it on your fingers though because then you won't get your fingers apart for a minute mm -hmm. I had a super glue explosion yesterday. Did you? <laughs> That's surprising, Denny. <laughs> what were you fixing? Because you weren't here. I forget what I was. I was working on a fishing rod. I was putting a new eye on a fishing rod, and I was going to super glue it on there until I got it wrapped. Then he was like, I just remember the super glue situation. <laughs> <laughs> and it went. <laughs> Uh, and of course, super glue doesn't come off with anything at all that I could find. No. I used acetone, and cement thinner, <laughs> paint thinner. I even tried soap. <laughs> didn't no. work. No. That radio was much easier to get off your hands, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, would you roll a flat braid with a round wood rod? Uh, actually, with a flat braid, you would... Uh, clamp Hair. something into it like this piece of metal. You would clamp it in your vise like so, and then you would run your flat braid like this over Across that. the top. Oh, so maybe like even like on the edge, like you could do it on the yeah, edge of the table. You could do it on the edge of the table, okay, or whatever. Yeah, that flattens it out nicely. You could probably even set it on a hard surface like this granite and tap it with a hammer. Yeah, that'll flatten it out. Yeah, too. so I think maybe we'll do this this um herring bone and then maybe next week we'll we can do the flat braid and maybe we'll make a hat band oh that could be a fun we could start on it we could start say. on a hat band we'll have we'll have we'll have one half or mostly made we won't make you watch us braid well maybe forever. maybe we can talk spencer into making one and then we'll start one and then we'll show a finishing of one that's mm -hmm. yeah that you know those kitchen cooking videos yeah 
Put one out of the oven, it's almost done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I cooked dinner the other night. I made some Thai basil with uh, hamburger meat. It was really good. Nice. You, you showed me uh, part of a video of, of your cooking show oh. you do with your daughters, and all you did was talk. You never even got out a pot or a pan. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> To it. You didn't even oh cut up a God. tomato. <laughs> well, I was waiting for you to come over. You didn't watch the, sec the, the second or the third. We had ten of them. There was ten of them in the series. We even cooked hamburger over at my mom's house. We grilled them on the last one. Okay, Tony. I think right. we're I think right. we're braiding now. Okay, sorry. Right. So now we need another strand. Uh, um, this is a. Oh, I should be able. To, uh, maybe not. Let's do the red. Yeah. I like the red. You can do that. Thanks. How uh, much? That's good. Perfect. Oh, that's funny. Okay. All right. Now we're going to do the... He, she she cut, cut off exactly 24 inches. Yep, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do uh, this part right here. The uh, grapevine hitch. So I'm going to tie this down onto this like so okay so it, with this hangman's knot that you did you only trimmed off one end yeah and i'm using the working end okay. to bind this down okay so we trimmed off the the tail end and we're using the working end on that yep. thread and this doesn't need to be super secure so i'm just going to throw a double half hitch in there which is basically you bring it around loosely mm -hmm. like so and you thread it through the loop twice just to kind of bind it down yeah maybe maybe if it wants to go in there so around twice i don't know what these are called but i use them when i like fabric so yeah <laughs> yeah that is a double half hitch okay this <laughs> like time flies it is yeah yeah i, I do that a lot too <laughs> I do that a lot too. All right. So now we're going to go into the grapevine, which is basically you're going to bring your cord or whatever leather around the back side. And you want to make a loop and make sure I always had the trouble of putting this up here. Okay. And putting it through this way. But you do not want to do that. You want to bring it under. Okay. So we're going to work this way. We want to bring it <clears throat> down. And then thread it through. So through the down front. and then up through. Yep. Okay. Up through like so. Okay. We're just gonna bring that up. Cinch that down. Yep. This you can tug it quite a bit. Because this is also help bring so these two. You just took it up far enough to cover your thread. Yep. And then we're gonna bring this down like that. Bring this through. Well, I'll be. Make sure that's nice up against our other one. And then kind of. That's kind of why you want to use kangaroo. Yeah. Because so, you really need to mm -hmm. tighten it up pretty good. Yeah, so you're going to pull it like this and then pull it back like that. And that'll seat that in a nice. Okay. Just draw that knot up against the other one. Right? Yep. All right. Wow. You can also adjust this with your fingers, make sure there's no gaps. There. I can just watch you instead of squinting at the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a bunch of screen across the room. And you, right next to you, Liz. I know. <laughs> so that's just the same thing over and over again. You're just making that loop down low and then through the front. Yeah. Yep. And you pull it up it, and then pull, pull it back. back. Give this. You see where it's starting right here? Mm-hmm. Starting to get a little spiral. That is cool. Knotting is pretty amazing. When when you look at that on that other piece, it looks so complicated. Yeah. It probably would be if I tried to do it. <laughs> you make it look so simple. Yep. I have a little problem. Don't see it too early. Penny Jessica May said the last time that she super glued herself together, she used vegetable oil. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Yeah. 
Or maybe you could have tried saddle sew. I had baked <laughs> it all right there. I wonder if that would have worked. Huh. Did you try any saddle sew? <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I tried Dawn dish sew. Uh, <laughs> that usually, you, you, you'll have to write Dawn and say, it doesn't work for everything, guys. <laughs> You can clean up ducks with it, but it won't do anything <laughs> super quick. <laughs> that head is really nice. There you go. <laughs> so would you roll a flat braid with a round wooden dowel? We already talked yeah, about that. we already got that one. Sorry, I didn't clear. Tony's failing okay. us. The Sorry. answer to that question was... <laughs> <laughs> no. No. It was no. You'd either do it on the side of the table or he You even answered it, it didn't you? Yeah, I know. You <laughs> well, okay. Okay. I was busy thinking about secret glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Josie Josie Wales has something we've talked about. So let me put it up there. I got fascinated by all this stuff yesterday. I mean, you guys were talking about the different knots and the different things in there, and I'm like, what in the world? A monkey fist. Yeah. Oh. We'll have to do one of those too, Spencer. Mm -hmm. I have to practice this. I don't do those too often. <laughs> the Turk's head. Knot. Josie, I've done Oops. one Turk's head knot before, and I made just like I just did the one ball to use as like an oil diffuser that I put on a chain, and and then after that I said I'm good. I'm good. I I did enough. It was not. It's complicated. It is very. It's very. It was. It was a lot. Yep, and there's a whole bunch of different types. Yeah. So. No, I like. I like braiding. I do. I do a lot of mystery braiding. You know, where you've got the two ends that are secure, and you you braid the center. I don't do a lot of round braiding, or like I don't. Obviously, I don't make whips either. Mm -hmm. That's not a thing. But. Maybe we'll do another one and we'll just get the microphone real close to him and just zoom in on his hands and just not invite Liz in here. <laughs> and it can be quiet. Put like Oceanscapes on. <laughs> <laughs> Oceanscapes. Yeah. <laughs> That'd even be cool if you had like a round break and just did that over mm -hmm. the top of one. Yeah. Did this over like a core or something, yeah. That is nice looking. So when you're doing this kind of a knot, do you know like how much? Uh, I have not measured it, no. Okay. I just grab more than I need. Yeah. You had exactly two feet of lace there. <laughs> That's very precise. All right. You did, it was about two feet. It was, yeah, it was probably about two feet. So it doesn't look the best. But anyway, there's a, it were this strand and this strand where we met them together. It wasn't quite all the way together. And that would help if we glued it. You see, there's a oh, little, there's a little, little yeah. divot right there. Mm -hmm. And that would go away if you had these strands closer together. So, gotcha. Yep, that's how to prevent that. I just didn't do it good. That's okay. We won't well, judge you too harshly. <laughs> now to finish this off, we're going to take a loop of string and lay it over that, just like that, with the loop facing down. Because we're going to pull the tag end up through the knots we tie over this. Can we see that part? Thing? Yeah, I think we're okay. The loop is facing towards you, yep. the yep. bottom of the screen. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Liz. Yep. <laughs> My napkin background. Contrast. So a couple more here. We did get just about exactly the amount of lace that we needed. Yep. So now we're gonna take the end of our lace. Let me break that up a little bit. End of our lace here. We're gonna put it through this loop and that string. Let me give it a little, a little slack like so. The lace. And we're gonna pull this. You're pulling both ends of that string. Yep. Yeah. That helps. You can get 
something like that. Kind of twist it around it. Pull it through. Oh, it didn't work. It broke the string. Oh well. It'll work. Normally it pulls it through. Mm. And this strand will be woven up through the back of this under these two knots. Right, to secure and then, it. Yes. Actually, I can I can fix this. And loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, I'll undo these two. Yeah, you got it pretty tight. Yes. Would it help if you put the like the loop in between the strands? Or like, like in between here? Yeah. 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 It also depends where you end your your spiral. Yeah, I suppose that's true too, huh? Yeah. So, let's try this again here. Longer piece of string. Oh, that might help. <clears throat> Thank you. We'll just do one this time. Break it down like that. Okay. And we're going to. Oh. Look at that. There it is. There it is. That's how it's exposed to look. <laughs> like that. Nice. Yep, and then and didn't you just clip off that excess? Just clip off the excess. Nice. Like so. Very nice. That spot's going to bother you, isn't it? It is very much <laughs> bother me. Could you roll that out a little bit? Um, possibly. I mean, some maybe to poke it in. Oh. Oh, I don't really have a... Pokey ends on them. This... No stabbing yourself. I'll try not to. We need like a modeling tool. Yeah. You know what I realized yesterday, guys? I was trying to paint our conference room and I didn't have a good can opener for the can of paint. So I realized that those little Osborne modeling tools with the white handles make really good paint openers, too. So does the flathead screwdriver. I know, but Stacy gave me one with an interchangeable bit, and so it didn't yeah. it didn't do the job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright. I'm just gonna have to live with it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That yeah. looks good. Yep. Just undo. Awesome. And there you go. So there's a little keychain lanyard, six strand sticks plat. Yep. Herringbone braid. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. It's a mouthful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, so we've got we got these guys. Uh, this guy. Oh. Do you want me to switch a camera? Sure. Okay. So look at that. Yeah, I think I picked better colors than you did. <laughs> Those are the only colors I had. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the colors I gave him yesterday <laughs> when I said try something. This this kid. I said, hey, do you want some quarter-inch kangaroo lace to, like, braid with and, and try it? And he's like, yeah, that'd be fine. And then he comes in with a bunch of these tiny little things, and he had cut down the quarter-inch kangaroo lace into eighth-inch kangaroo lace. And I was like, well, I could have gotten you eighth-inch kangaroo lace. Well, I didn't lace. know what I needed. But he didn't know. So he's like, oh, just the wider is better, and I'll just make it work. And yeah. he did. So, in any case, awesome. So that's this week, guys. We're going to take some pictures of our bracelets that we have there. Okay. Oh, yeah. And we'll ask... We'll ask you, we're going to do the like and share kind of thing, and we'll give them away on Friday when you're awesome. in here. Awesome. Yep. So we've got we've got these three bracelets. We've got the tooled one by Denny. We've got the one that we made in the video the other day that Denny did buck stitch, actually. So this one looks pretty cool. He added, um, after the video was done, he added a little buck stitch design here. Oh, this camera is so awkward and hard. Okay. But I think that looks really awesome. Super excited about that guy. And then we've got this one. <laughs> that Denny did with the Come with the on, spots. Liz. There's no circle on the table for you to put it in. I know. 
Anyways, so yeah, so we'll do the, the like and share and you do your thing and then we'll give these away. We'll draw from the hat next week or on Friday. On Friday. And then Friday, what are we doing, Denny? Oh, you should have brought... Oh, we're let me go run again. We're doing oh. a beaded inlay on a knife sheet. Yeah, so we've got a cute little um, holster style knife yeah, sheet. Yeah, yeah. A, a little pocket a little knife. Cross draw or... Uh, mm -hmm. Pocket or folding knife sheet yeah. is what it is. Well, and I've got a really cool knife to do it with. Nice. It was Tony's grandfather's. Very cool. So we'll be in here. We'll do a beaded inlay knife sheath. So just a little guy like that. And then next week, we will be back with Spencer on Wednesday to do another braiding video. It looks like we're going to do a hat band with a flat braid. So we'll just start working our way up, and eventually we'll get to one of these whip situations, mm -hmm. which will probably take a whole month or I don't know yeah, right, how that's long. All right. It's going to take a while. Everybody likes to. Oh, yeah. This, so, is, what, this is what we're going to do We'll go to the week. overhead. It's so zoomed in. Well, It's fine. It's fine. Here we go. I just ran through the store to go get that. Look at that. I made it. Okay. So we're going to do that again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. Well, guys, we'll see you Friday. Thanks for joining us. Like, share, do your thing. <laughs> Look, uh, I did it. <laughs> uh, the bracelets are going to be on Facebook. Okay, they're on gonna be, Facebook. They're going to be on Facebook and Instagram. So like and share, tag somebody. Facebook and Instagram. Enter to win one of these beautiful stone inlay bracelets. Awesome. Have a good week, guys. Yeah, see you.